All right, so we've all had our fair share of pivot table headaches, whether you've mastered them or just muddled through. But now there's Pivotify. And the big question is, could it be better? In today's video, we'll put the classic pivot table side by side with this new tool to see which it truly delivers. Is Pivotify a serious upgrade or just another shiny distraction? By the end, you'll have a clear understanding of how they stack up. So stick around, you might just find the solution to your data frustration, or confirm that the original still reigns supreme. So here we have a range of data here, and what I usually like to do is convert it into a table first. So go to insert, and then table, and it's going to select create a table. My table does have headers, these are the first row is headers. Click OK, it makes a table, and we're going to turn this table and source it source it to a pivot table. So I go to insert, pivot table, and we're going to do our comparison of a pivot table versus the pivot by function. So let's do that. Existing worksheet, let's put it here in cell, let's put it in this cell. And make it simple, we'll put state in our rows, we'll put gender in our columns. Let's put age here. And for age, we don't really need to sum up the age. Well, let's average it. Click on that drop down value field settings. Let's average that. Click OK. And we see our average age. Instead of having decimals, select one of the cells, right click, and number format. Let's make that a number and not have any decimals. Click OK. And now we have that, All right? And so we've got our pivot table. Let's compare the pivot by formula with that. And to make it also easier, we have these row labels. And let's do that under design, report layout, and show an outline form so we can get the headers there. So that's our pivot table. Let's compare that with the pivot by functions. So in column G, I'm going to create it here in column G. Let's do G5. Type pivot by, click on that. Let's move our little tooltip up here, make it easier for us. Row field. What are our row fields? It's state. So we're going to choose state here, B2 to control shift down arrow, uh, B31, right? And you can see here that Excel is smart enough to tell us, hey, we this is a table name. Let me get out of this. Escape. Let me click in here. We have our table design. By default, when you create a table, it gives it a, a table name. You can change this. And this is our table name. And within table name, instead of the normal cell referencing where we've got uh, B1, B2, it'll give you the header field. So that's why you see it there when I do this pivot by function, right? Pivot by and my row fields. If I didn't want that, I can also do B1 to B31. If I just type B2, actually B2 colon B31, it's going to select the same thing, right? But but here, Excel is nice enough to give me that table naming convention. Now, what are my column fields? My column fields, it's going to be male, female. So I will select this gender here, select that, control shift down arrow, select that. You can see that Excel has been nice enough to also say, hey, we're in table one, and this is the gender column. Press comma, it's going to take us to the third argument. i move this back up here, which is the values. Where are the values here? It was the age, right? Average of age. So we need to select our age column. And if you want to be slick with pivot tables, what you can also do is just type it table. You can see that it has selected tables, select that. And if we did open square brackets, it's going to give us the column names where you can select from. We want to select from age, click, double click that, close bracket. And we got our tooltip here and we're going to pick function and we use average for a pivot table. Click on average, double click that, close parentheses, press enter. And we've got the same thing here. Select this. Let's round it. We can go here and so, oops, we can just move it back here. Or we can go on the drop down, more number formats. And we do the same thing that we did earlier number, no decimal places, click OK. And we've got the same thing here. Do you notice it's pretty much the same, right? So we've got our same values here. So, why would you want to use the pivot by function rather than just a pivot table? Pivot table looks much nicer in a way. But one of the most common positives of the pivot by function is it's dynamic. Let's say we give this crazy age to Carol White. Let's make her a thousand years old, right? Press enter. Now you notice that's changed there, but that has not changed here. What you need to do is right click, press refresh, select refresh, and it changes there. And so that's the beauty of the pivot by function is it's dynamic. For the pivot table, you need to right click refresh. Control Z to undo that. Control C to undo that, that changed it. So that's one of the big facts. Aside from that, there's not really that many features when you really think about trying to learn all the different arguments that you need to put in here, as opposed to the drag and drop nature of a pivot table. If we go to show food list, you can just drag and drop things in there. 
But closer to the end of the video, I'll show you one hack that might make it to use the pivot by function rather than pivot table. But let's go through the pivot by argument so it get a good idea of what it does for you. So if we had this average here, we, we can see that there's a bunch of other arguments here. Oops, close that. There's a bunch of other arguments here with the pivot by feature. This field headers, row headers, and let's see how they compare with the pivot table feature itself. So if we went further than function and we want to change our field headers, we've got these options here. And right now it's no, but what if we said yes and show? If we said yes and show, double click that, close parentheses, you can see that it doesn't look like it's done too much. And it looks kind of weird. We've got this male header here, but that's because when we selected this, when we selected the um, the arguments here, we selected not the headers. We didn't include the headers. Let's just see if we selected the cell ranges, if it will take care of that for, for us, because right now it's got the uh, structured table formatting. I'm going to select C2, pull into C31, and for the age, we'll do the same. That's going to be D, E2 to B31. Oh, actually, no. Let me, let me include the headers. B1 to B31, C1 to C31, D2, D1 to D31. Press Enter. And now you see that it has included the gender like it did up here. That's one of the things about the pivot by feature you got to be aware of because it's a little bit wonky when you think about the arguments that it's being used. Let's change that. Now let's go to something else. I'm just going to put an extra comment there. So now we're going to get into the row total death. And if I move this back up here, you can see that is bolded. It's telling me like, do I need to include totals in there? And so right now I've got a total down here. Let's see if I didn't want totals. Maybe I press put the zero there. Press enter. Now the total's gone, so I don't have that there. So if you didn't want a total there, you just use that particular argument. And you can do the same here. If I select here, right click, remove grand total, that removes the grand total, so it moves there. Now, if I wanted to go to the next argument here, let's go to where it says row sort order, comma. What's our row sort order? So this is the row sort. So we only have one row that we identified, B1 to B30. By default, it sort is ascending. So if we want to sort of descending, have Washington show up first, we'll do negative one. One is in a way by default. And so if we did negative one, close parentheses, press enter, you'll see Washington show up first. Let's say we had two rows. Let's say we included um, up here to C31. And then we didn't want to have this. Well, let's, let's get rid of that. Press enter. Now we've got Washington and female. You can see we've got two, right? So if we had this, the equivalent of that would be, if we showed our field list, we'd bring that down here. And then we've got it like this, right? And we sorted it from uh, last to first. And in a way, that's how it would look. I have to do some more formatting here, but that's basically what this is doing. So here I got it sorted with this descending first, and then this first column, and then the second column with that uh, ascending, F comes before M, right? But if we wanted to sort this one first and then this one second and do, the, do it like this, let's say we wanted to sort Washington and then we want to have male first here and we wanted to sort this from uh, Z to A, we have male first. What we need to do is put this in parentheses. And so this is the first value, this is the second value. So not parentheses, but uh, curly brackets. And so if we had curly brackets and we wanted to have negative one, that's going to sort descending on the first index value. The second one, we also wanted to have that uh, sort uh, descending, which would minus two, because that's the second row. We close the curly brackets, press enter, and now we have it exactly like that. So that's how you would use that argument. Let's get out of this and change that back. Delete that, and let's go to the next one. Let's go to the column total death. And basically that's the totals, right? And so what we can do here is if we wanted to have, now if we had wanted to have the grand totals, we only have the total at the top, we click on that, Minus one, it's going to move it over, press enter, press zero, press enter. Columns, I don't know if we can have totals here, so I'm going to turn this into a sum. So let's go back and make that a sum. Press tab, comma, and let's go into our column total, comma, 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 and now we got to our total here. And let's say we wanted the, well, actually, let's, let's first see what, what it looks like. We have our total here. Let's move the male and female back over there to the columns so we can get a total on our rows. Go back over here and we're going to say 
B C1 to C31 and make this B1 to B31. You can see the ranges are back into its column. Press enter and we've got this. We've got our total here. Let's do the same back, same for this one. Let's do the same for this one. Right click, show field list, and we're gonna put gender back over here. And let's make this a sum. So we're gonna change it now. We're gonna make these sums. Actually, sum is probably not good for the pivot guy. Let's change this back to a sum instead of an average. I mean, an average instead of a sum. Click on that, press enter. And now we've got that. So back to our total column here. And if I clicked in there, comma, 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 bring me back to our sums here, our um, column totals. And what it does is it's gonna move this total column. If I wanted to move it to the top, it's gonna move it over to the left. Select that, press, press parentheses, press enter. You can see the total is moved over to this cell. Is there an equivalent here? Let's see if it works. If I type in grand, we can see if we see if this works. Grand total, let's see if it moved it over. And it doesn't move it over. So there's, I don't think there's an equivalent for that. Control Z to undo that. Uh, even if we move the grand total, right click and try to move that over, it cannot move it here. So I guess that's another thing. If you wanted to move the total here, you can you do that with the pivot by feature. And so we don't want to do that. That doesn't really make too much sense when you think about it. But let's see what we have for our other arguments. Our column sort order. What does it mean? Well, basically it's sorting this. Right now it's F comes before M, but if we didn't want that, maybe you wanted a descending minus one, close parentheses, press enter. Now you can see mail comes first. This last one is filter array. So basically what do you want to filter out or filter in? Let's filter out mail. I don't want to see any of the mails. So what I need to do is select my mail category and that's C2 to C31. Oops, C31, I'll just type that in there. And does not equal mail. Let's say I just want to see females. Type in mail in, in quotes, close parentheses, press enter. Now mail's gone from there. It's the same thing as if you uncheck this box here, click okay, and mail is gone from there. Just the, just the females here. And then let's make this consistent A to Z. And you can see that is the same there. Now I, have, I, don't, I don't have my totals there. Maybe I'm gonna add my total back there so it looks the same. So grand totals uh, on for rows and columns. Let's make the grand totals appear back on. So now there's one last one. There's one last argument here. If I click here, let's remove that filter. Let's delete that and remove that filter. We have this relative to, if I press comma, comma, and you've got these relatives. So let's say for example, you wanted to show these not as numbers, but as, as a percentage of the total. Now, so let's say, well, let me close parentheses first. And, Get this back to its normal here and i'll also do this and unselect clear that filter so it looks the same now let's go back maybe we want this as percentages okay the percentage of the row to the grand total here and if i select this let's see how it shows up in the pivot table first select this anyone any of the cells in here right click and we want to show values as a percentage of the row total click on here and you see and you see these are wonky figures because we're doing average let's just make it easy for ourselves and show values as a count, right? And so we have a count and this makes it easier. And so let's do the same thing here. Instead of average, we'll make this a count. And since we're counting numbers, age, that works. This number, this one counts. Hey, this one worked. Press enter and now we got our counts here. And so just to make sure we got it, this is two. There's, Illinois says two, right? So it's 100% here. So if we wanted to see this as that, that percentage, what we need to do is we need to use that relative two. And what we did earlier, we wanted to see the relative to the total. So if I select that, you would think that it works. Control parentheses, press enter, but you don't see anything happening. And the reason why is that we need to change something here. We're going to use the percent of, and that's the function that we got to change this one from count to percent of. And you see there's something wonky that happens. So if I selected that and press enter, we'll see these values here. That's 100%, right? These are right. But you can see that these values are a little wonky. So, and so using percent of is probably something that uh, wouldn't really jive too much when you're trying to compare it with the pivot table. When you're trying to compare it to the pivot table in itself. But if we want just to have some simplified version of a pivot table and we're just kind of putting in a dashboard, we, we didn't want people to auto right click refresh. Using the pivot by feature is adequate enough when you think about it. And if I can select this 
and I'll just uh, remove those decimal places. Um, oops, the other way, the other way. And we can take care of that there. And it's dynamic enough where, you know, if I put something crazy here, you, you'll see that, you know, figures show up, controls you to undo that. And so you don't have to right click refresh for that. There maybe is one instance where I would use the pivot by feature. And that's if I wanted to show text in here. And so it's really hard to show text in here. Um, in it by itself, you probably would have to go in and use uh, some other functions, DAX functions. I have another video on that. I can put it into the description. Let's go into the bonus portion where I say, how do you put hex values in the value section? You can't really put it in here in the pivot table because it doesn't allow for that. Uh, there is a workaround for that. I'll have a link to a video that shows that, but you can do it here. And how do we do that? Let's try this. And what you need to do is in this function, you use the function called array to text. Click that, press enter, and you're gonna have the values here. Oops, what I forgot to do is this is not an array. H, uh, D1 to D31, it's not text. So uh, let's use E. I'll change this to E and change this one to E. And press enter. Let's get rid of this pivot table. We don't need it anymore. Right click, delete. And what I'm gonna do is select this and auto fit. And you're gonna see some really weird stuff here. Look, let's fit this in here to make it a little bit more readable. And you see that green green shows up twice. So for California. So if I looked at California and you see that California shows you, you'll see that California sh green shows up twice. And that's why it shows up under female twice. Let me clear the filter from that. And maybe we don't want that to show up twice. We, we just want to show the unique values. Well, what we can do is we have to put this array text into a function called Lambda. The array text, I need to put the Lambda in here. I'll type Lambda, click on that. Double click to select my Lambda. I'm going to call it text, comma, and this array text, I need to have unique values. So I'm going to open parentheses, type in unique, Select unique. And what is going to be unique? We want unique text here. So type in text. And I need to close parentheses now. Close parentheses. It will close it for the lambda. Close parentheses again. It will close it for pivot by. Close parentheses. Press enter. And now we have our unique values. California, purple, and green. Let me make this one a little bit smaller. And now we have our unique values in the text field. So that may be one of the pluses of using the pivot by function instead of a pivot table, putting text within your value section of your pivot table. Thanks for sticking around. So what do you think? Pivot by or the classic pivot tables? Hopefully this comparison helped you decide which tool fits your workflow best. Whether you're ready to try something new or stick with what works, the choice is yours. Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if this video helped, Give it a like and subscribe for more tips to boost your data skills. See you in the next one.